And then two weeks later, 20 seconds later, uh, I got bored and brought it back with lower expectations this time. And I've just noticed that because everything is still queued up from the last episode I did, we've got stuff like Moonflower. Moonflower's there. Uh, but yeah, let's go. How she did that. Remember, this is all, this is like a... So this was like, the, the idea was that it was all, it's very Metal Gear. This is it was I originally I'd down. written so like this, this whole like two-page thing of 12, me going through this huge conspiracy around 5G and the Queen and uh, and uh, I think McDonald's was involved at some point. And then I just thought, you know what? This is funny to me. No one else is going to find it funny. Let's do me... Obviously, that's just me standing up straight that I flipped 90 degrees and then tried to make it look like I'm clanging onto a roof. The joke is, I've set up this idea that this is like a 20 minute sparrow type adventure starring me and the Queen. That's going to be but boring as we don't you, you, you don't know the queen me. so it's like you'll be bored so, instead, so why don't you just look at what I'm uh, you know why I ostensibly did while I was off which is just pictures from my actual trip to I think I do India and Nepal yeah because there's monkeys from India um why don't I show you what I got up to when I was back in Nepal so I, the joke you know, was that people would be disappointed That's my uh, profile picture. I use that as my like profile on Twitter. That's me and Sujin. Here's my guide. He got me uh, up the Throngla Pass. Good guy. Good guy. All right. Well, based on the comments, some of you are just goddamn ungrateful. And here is the first appearance of Tiffany, who obviously the joke at the time was. Look, it's just me in, a, in my new wig. What's behind this door? What's behind the door? Uh, That's right, it's a 1979 hey, hey Ford Esprit. Tiffany, why didn't you show him what it's about? So, yeah, okay, the joke so is, oh, here's just here's like our glamour girl. Uh, in the same way that kind of there was a lot of take-ups of there's quiz shows in the like 90s and stuff, uh, 70s and 80s. They always um, had these kind of like and, you know, even babes on uh, who were going to, who their entire job was either to read out the score or just to demonstrate the prizes. I thought, well, that's... Uh, you know that's quite nice. Uh, so thank you, Tiffany. Say goodbye. <laughs> no, that's quite nice. That's quite easy to parody. And hopefully, they'll see you later. See, you. I even, so I even almost room. gave it away there, saying like you'll, and what you'll hopefully you see her later. If you happen to win, please do again. Uh, so this was right at the height of J.K. Rowling being a big turf. Um, she's horrible. She's a horrible woman. Uh, but I, I was like, well, I can't add anything to, to that debate because everyone knows she's horrible. So what if I just pointed out how crap her writing is? Because it is awful. It is awful. Oh, no, it, Harry Potter is the most boring possible version Hi. of that story it could be. And most of it is just her lack of imagination. Everything that is magic just moves. There's almost nothing else. That was green food coloring mixed with uh, charcoal toothpaste. And I want to say it was like squash to create this kind of virulent green. Threw it up onto a towel that I'd had on my floor. Missed. It's a hardwood floor. It went everywhere. There's Did still children, like traces of it, just like on the skirting boards and stuff. Very tricky to know what J.K. Rowling would wear. So obviously, pink T-shirt, Hawaiian shirt, dressing gown. He's a wizard. <laughs> that was so loud when I did that. That. Now I know what you're thinking, J.K. But that sounds like it takes a lot of imagination. Well, you'd be wrong. So yeah, this is something I thought for years and years and years, and I'm, I'm always confused when people think they defend the series as being like, oh, it's a gateway to fantasy. It's a it's a kids book. It's a gateway to more adult fantasy, but they never take quite take that step. Everything's so fucking boring in that series. This bit goes on too long, but look, this is I think this is like the Ur example of it. It's wizard chess. It could have been anything. It could have had different pieces. It could have had like. Uh, it, it could have told us more about the world, like Thud does for um, for Discworld. It could have been, I think, oh, you know, let's just go through it. So there's uh, the Stones game in Assassin's Quest, which tells you more about kind of the nature of the skill. Uh, the, the player of games is, in fact, based around an entire culture being, uh, an entire civilization being described through a game, and that game having, playing the game, having ramifications on society itself. But wizard chess, no, it's just chess, but the pieces move. Chess, but the pieces move. Fredo's. It's crap. It's so bad. 
magic freddos. Oh, it's that's magic freddo. It moves. Frogs. They're chocolate. I, the, I tell you what, there is one thing I like in the Harry Potter universe, and it's the Moving pensive, car. because that is a good pun. But that's it. Moving tree. Well, okay. Everything moves. Well, how do we get into the Chamber of Secrets? The toilet, the, the, the sinks and the toilets move, and then the snakes on the door move, and then you're in it. It's so crap. Even arguably, like, the port key just moves you. Lots of vomit. She's full of bile. So this is quite a good... Oh, you can see there that it's like deliberately crap. You can see that like my uncut for the waist. Um, this is... I've taken a stock photo off Unsplash of Conference Room and the board at the back had something that looked a little bit like this, the Friends of the Missing, with that symbol. So what I did is I, I got Photoshop up and I, as close as I could, like traced the symbol, uh, made it, stylized it, and then added Friends of the Missing so it looks legit. So the uh, the whole idea here is... I can't remember where this came from. It was busy. We just launched a new range of items. What was it? And... I noticed that why it was something it was something they, like they were no longer there. Uh, I ran out. Oh no, I'll tell you exactly what it was. It was I asked somebody, wouldn't it be embarrassing if the McCants had always just counted the children wrong and they were always just like they always just forgot and and Maddie had been there the whole time. It wasn't actually that funny, but it kind of developed into this idea that you'd have to that you could use a um a missing family as really good publicity for something. I mean that's the entire joke. Hard road to get this far, but we finally launched that that new range of items. Like that I new said. range of breakfast and products. I just want to get back to that. Anybody got any questions? So James Prendergast from the Express. So here you can see my my very uh, objective and non-biased take on uh, the tabloid press in the UK, the right-wing well, tabloid press. Again, we don't know. Scum. Nobody saw anything. Scum. Uh, I I don't want to speculate about where they were from you know, oh yeah so and, the, it's like the, the rather than asking the actual questions you know the express goes why would immigrants do this the sun's like why would immigrants do this james on cali road that's just uh, a shop front that i yeah. took a picture of and then just uh, um, Peter Tracy from the sun. yeah the sun's the why sun if you the sun has come do don't buy the sun the country I, like i said it had been busy we do we do good deals and we do diff different deals every night and and this one had felt this one went on way too long. Got a, a new deal that we launched where you get two two pizzas every. This one went on too long. I hate the one, thing I did with the timing at the end, where it goes straight from the map huge, to oh, they turned up. It should have been slightly and longer and between the two. It should have been map, and, and then he should have gone. Why I didn't, I didn't oh, they turned up. It shouldn't have been. Oh, they turned up. We're missing, and I just that gap there is that gap there is horrific. Launched a new range of. Menu items. Oh, I did. There's the, the, the Vorken hoodie again. Family. Um, I'm from the news. So that was genuinely me going like, I'll, and, I will ad lib uh, a great fake uh, newspaper name and then just not. Elaborate on the new menu items that you were talking about. Basically, sound, after a while, I started going, I'm, no, I'm going to do everything in one take because that way, if I laugh, I know it's not. So we, I, the defense is, I did it all in one take. One deal, you know, I'm not doing it to be, uh, what's his face, who was left on SNL. All the way through to, uh, to one of our veggie specials. And we do cater to all the tastes. We, you know, we do veggie, we do halal, uh, everything you need. This goes on very long. A, a great night out with the family. We've just got an arcade machine in as well to James's on Cali Road. And, you know, if you, if you don't mind, I'll just... I'll just the discrepancy between Cali there. Road, which is clearly I'm London, just, uh, find me and his accent. Moment. But that's that's a great question. And oh, they turned up. So there you go. Too fast. Everybody for this. Thank you to BBC Sky ITV for giving me this free airtime. So there you go. Just in case you didn't get it. Look over those menus and I'll see you there soon. Bye. Oh, that's right. Originally, I had everyone. <laughs> it made me laugh. <laughs> originally, I had everyone, all the uh, all the journalists holding up a holding up a menu. Cut it out. Don't know why. So here we go. This was a uh, uh, just a one-off gag originally. It's the car! So we've had it's the car. a 70s oh my car God, congratulations. running on... Tiffany this is leaded petrol, obviously. And the, the door fumes, being shut. The fucking fumes. The fumes have got Tiffany. Get her out! It obviously then took over the entire show. And, I mean... Get her, the one get thing her out! Then set the tone for the entire rest of the series. Uh, asked my mates to do a little bit of continuity announcing between the two. I like the idea that it's almost like people are watching it. And even more than that, because everyone had watched Corona Quiz Countdown, like the countdown to the quiz starting for like every week until then, because I always set it up to go live about like two minutes past eight, so people had time to arrive. Uh, I like the idea that it was 
in the universe of Corona Quiz, that's like a really popular program. So the Corona Quiz countdown is something separate to Corona Quiz. So this is my mate Baven doing well, the intro. What a cliffhanger. The Corona Quiz countdown will return next week. But for now, we have an amazing night for the rest is of the evening. First, a message from our sponsor. Both Murder on the Links <laughs> and <laughs> like Death on the Nile. And then this is just me plugging my shit. Okay, what could it be? Tiffany's <laughs> dead. But oh my god, Candy's it's not. a jacuzzi and attached toaster. Wow, that's incredible. There you go, and obviously the joke. You don't even need me to tell me what the joke is. Candy, if I were you, I'd, uh, I'd take it. So, so Emily Sheffield, um, sister of Samantha Cameron, sister-in-law to former Tory Prime Minister David Cameron, uh, had just, literally just been appointed to be the editor of the Evening Standard, um, a role she was taking over from David Cameron's Chancellor, George Osborne, who was a sh- who is still at the standard. He's still crap. He's still known as worky by the staff, being as, as much use as a work experience student. He's a gimmick editor. And that kind of nepotism, really shutting out people who deserve the chance to be the editor of a national uh, metro newspaper, um, annoyed me. And I thought, well, how do you demonstrate that? Well, you have Elvis singing Ladies with a producer song. A producer's son. We can skip through this one because a lot of it is literally just me being Elvis. You can tell by the the stripes and the old, you know, the old timey filter, the jacket because I don't have a leather jacket, and uh, Elvis song, no wig. Went too low there. So here's the producer's son sneaking in, purely on the strength of his family connections. Do you, it, do you get it? Do you get it, or is it too subtle? Uh, my million kids? Million kids? Um, very depressed man. He's nothing to live for. He thinks, well, I want to give back. Uh, let me adopt a child. So you can see there, I do some fantastic face acting, and I'm like, oh, adoption. So this is, I recorded my screen using QuickTime, uh, and then just like cut it into that footage. Uh, I was sort of worried when I was doing it because this is a real I think that's I can't remember what that's called but that's like a real yeah that's first for adoption that's a real website and I'm still not sure if that's fine that's my real postcode I told you which road road 11 before anyway it's fine hold my phone filming myself clicking and then look oh that's great a couple of weeks later six months later even that's me going. Bzz, bzz. Hello, hello, Mr. Dave. And again. Yes, yeah, speaking. Oh no, that's my actual phone because yeah, you know you I'm filming this on Zoom, so I don't need to use really? the switch again. Oh my goodness. Uh, a bit of a like a, it's a style parody of one of those old shows like um, My Three Sons, or well, that's the Futurama episode, or like My Two Dads, or whatever. Um, they're kind of like, oh, you've adopted, you know, even different strokes. Oh, you've adopted these kids from very different backgrounds. So that's where that joke comes in. Um, it's it's an old school sitcom all of a sudden. Ten kids? Nope. It's billion, billion kids. <gasps> so this is f- I can't remember where I got this footage from, but this is free footage. Uh, obviously that's Seoul. I think that's Hong Kong. Uh, that's somewhere in Europe. So he's accidentally adopted Europe. And that was like the, a, a theme song thrown together in... I think I just started playing C, G, and D. And that was it. There you go. That's the Corona Quiz stage, because, like I said, I was running out of time and just... I'll reuse that footage again when it's uh, We Are Scientists next time. Never, I can never take the place of your... Real Look at that crap ADR. I just couldn't get that lip syncing right. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here, old man. You're not a real dad. The joke is that... Everybody is suddenly treating him as you would a step a stepfather or a stepmother. None of this quite worked out as I wanted. That's not how we treat Kent. Go there and tidy it up. Go and tidy up a county. You've ruined it, billion kids. Where well, they all sleeping? Don't worry about it. It's time for you to go to bed, though, kids. I should, what I should have done is add more of a choral effect to the uh, kids' voices. 
Tracy's, David's, Tullisy's. Come on, why are they the ones who are causing trouble? And how does he know all their names so quick? Girlfriend got me that book. Uh, you can tell by the by the way I continue that I was. There's a lot more footage of me reading that book. Uh, Wikimedia Commons photo of Europe, so I don't have to worry about rights. It's just like, oh, what a nice, what a nice story. Oh wait, no, this man has a billion people at his disposable. Disposable, disposal. What are you going to do with it? Obviously, you're going to become a dictator. In fact, I think the, originally the vast majority of the sketch was going to be, it was like set up and then it was a much longer bit of him being a dictator, having a seat at the UN. UN? UN. He's, you, it, with that much power, you're inevitably going to become a a, uh, like a merciless ruler in the same way that Nanny argues in Discworld. You know, just like exerting power just by the shin number of people you've got. And there's a callback to that again. But that might that wasn't actually a frozen image, that was me trying to be still. Um This is something I actually made very quickly earlier that week. Uh there was the TikTok meme of two girls pretending that they hadn't heard songs like I think Beyonce was on there, just very famous songs, and they fooled a bunch of people into thinking that Gen Z were just completely unaware of any music from before they were like, I don't know, teens. And it was obviously fake, and they, they came out and said, like, we fooled you all. But it annoyed me, the idea that millennials, boomers, Gen X were looking down on these kids and going like, well, you... Even though it was fake, they were like, well, what do you mean you don't know all these... What do you mean you don't know these very famous songs? And it's like, well, they're not beholden to your taste and culture. So I thought, well, what's a good way to illustrate that? Let's have somebody of my age, 32, not recognise um, songs from previous, not just like decades, but centuries. And then ultimately stuff like, oh, he doesn't recognise uh, a dinosaur roar. He, he doesn't recognise the vacuum of space. He doesn't, rec he doesn't recognise the Big Bang. So that green sleeve, what's this shit? Who's heard of the green sleeve? Uh, Gregorian chanting. That bit, there's a part where one of the... It's really well done, the video they did, where she pretends like she's recognised something and then she goes back, and she clearly does know it. So that's that dinosaur. can't remember where I got that sound effect from. Who knows? Who knows the Big Bang these days? What, you mean you haven't heard the Big Bang? Oh god, well, I mean, yeah, if you like the latest stuff, that's great, but really, you know, you've got to go back for the really stuff. The first Big Bang was incredible. Uh, return of the continuity announcer this time, it's my mate Natalie. Uh, targeting targeting to Return of Forkin after I came back from hiatus from the first, from quitting. I was like, well, I don't want to have any repeat characters, I don't want any characters coming back. And eventually I did break that. But uh, for the most part, I was just like, I'm done with Vorkin. He was in too many shows. Uh, so I'm done with Chad, Chad Dredrington. Um, and for the most part, I stuck to it. Okay. Now I'm worried. I know Sandra. that this, she's the last, Sandra's, Sandra's the last sister. I don't want it to be a... a um, the joke is, what's the most dangerous thing it could possibly be? It's piranhas. <laughs> piranhas were up there with stuff like Acid Rain and uh, Global Warming and Y2K when I was a kid as being stuff like, you are probably going to die to one of these things. One of these things is going to get you at some point. Uh, Moonflower is a weird one. So everything in this is something I drew on my tablet. Uh, deliberately tried to evoke like a very kids TV show thing and to that end got my girlfriend to do the voiceover um, because she has a huge family and uh, five younger siblings, so she is she has a very good storytelling voice. In a little house it's per a great voice. Hill, so this is Moonflower. Um, wanted it to be easy to animate. All right. And crucially it had to have a very it had to have a big space on its snout so I could do this. I'd only just figured out how to do uh, that saturate that saturation difference when I was masking and using opacity. So I could really have that, like, my face appear, my mouth appear pink. I, that made me laugh so much. Just that smash cut between, like, absolute nightmare and this. And the, the joke is, of course, 
Uh, it's a very fantastical looking creature in a cartoon world. It has every single one of the problems that we have. He's got to work late. He's got nothing in the fridge. Uh, he gets a second wind when he's trying to get to sleep. This always this happened to me last night. Actually, I've been knackered all day, all day, and then it got to just gone twelve, and I was wide awake. And I was like, "Well, do I at this point just do I watch a movie? Do I start playing a game?" And instead, I just lay there until I had to get up to go to the bathroom, and then it, by that point, it was like half one. Uh, I just went to sleep. At one point, I don't know why, when I was drawing it, I gave Moonflower really muscular arms, and. It was, it was, I don't even know if it was funny, I think it was just weird, and it definitely detracted from it. Oh, and ultimately it turns out to be a joke on Stephen King, because Stephen King has, you know, previous, I mean, he has said, oh, he didn't realise that Misery was about his struggles with alcoholism and, and addiction until it was, like, previously written. And I like the idea that you could do that about a kid's book character, and go, oh my god, this is, this was me. Oh my god, I was writing about myself the whole time. Of course you were, because it's literally everything that Moonflower happened to Moonflower happens to everybody. That's the joke. The picture round. Hard to do. So this bit, this is a uh, little Chris. So. No, 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 fuck off. So this is a pre-recorded thing which I used with the transparent background, which I then. Used as an overlay, animated overlay, over me doing it live. So me blowing at him there was me doing that live and trying to make it match up timing-wise. And it worked out okay, um, but it definitely could have been better. And here's the, I suppose, conclusion to the episode for the little Chris running thing. There he goes. So that's, again, me running on the spot with the transparent background and then me chasing him. Everybody has said, so that's my room. You can see the green screen briefly there. Uh, this is the flat. And you can basically... Luckily, I don't think my flatmates were in, but all this is dubbed. So I didn't actually scream when I fell down there. None of this is me doing it live. Uh, so my flatmates didn't hear any of this, at least out of the room. This was very hard to do, and you can tell because it's crap. Look, he he appears over that. I've always hated that, the way I said that. Where did he go? You Nothing. Who knows? And so he he ultimately does appear in the sink there. Everybody, I think, spotted it here. I think everyone spotted it, but I think it was funnier to me that nobody in universe did, so I didn't. And then later on, somebody, hit, I think it was Shazi, texted me saying, he's in the sink. And I went, uh, I don't think so. The whole idea with Little Chris was completely unrelated to the, the murders at first. Um, it was purely just, isn't? Sorry. wouldn't it be funny if the continuity announcer tried to take another show? And at one point, what I was going to do was have... So that's this is live again. This is me pretending to shift back onto the bed. Uh, I thought, wouldn't it be funny if we had an entire episode hosted by Little Chris and they would occasionally cut to me, obviously put out by the fact that his popularity has eclipsed my own. Um, but I couldn't figure out a way to do it and have it seem natural uh, because I, I would have to have been sat like this, like exactly like I am now, just very tiny in the corner of the screen trying to pretend like I was Little Chris or uh, pre-record everything and have it as like transparent background, but that would have just been completely, it, it takes the laptop so long to render anything that has that transparent background that that was completely unfeasible. So ultimately it didn't happen. Would have been funny, didn't happen. So what's the joke here? Um, Sandra, why we think she's been killed by the, she's been fucking stabbed. we think she's been killed by the piranhas. No, she's been stabbed. A, a subversion of expectations. A subversion of expectations. Who could have seen that coming? Let's just get this off the screen. Let's just get this off the screen. You've won the mug. I'll send the mug to you. Uh, weird then that we'd have We Are Scientist players out. This one's kind of annoying actually because it was obviously grew the mustache to play uh, Chris Kane from We Are Scientists. Um, and that this is me having pre recorded everything. I'm miming to it, which I thought was actually quite good. I think I did, did it quite well. But I I wanted to go more elaborate with it because I, I had stuff like a second guitar coming in towards the end instead of just guitar and bass, and I had a little bit of piano and keyboard coming in. But I thought, at the time, I regret doing it, I thought, well, the conceit is that they're doing this live, so it would just be the guitar and the bass. 
But I, it would have been so much better if I had actually added the rest of that stuff in. Maybe, maybe next time. So this is episode 13, which just by coincidence, or maybe through bad luck, I don't know, ended up being the worst episode of the whole thing. Uh, everything was recorded in about two hours after I got back from... Uh, my train was delayed back from Warrington, and I had no time to do it. In fact, that's why this first skit is actually set on the train, because I was like, well, I don't have time to do anything else. And you can see, I didn't even have time to shave my head. Call me Ishrael. The train, or Steam Locom Engine... Steam Locom Engine. So this is Arvid Battenborough of uh, My Life in World fame. Um, now doing... What is that called? Oh, My Move in World. Um, yeah, so it's, a, it's, it's the same gag. It is Arvid, it's Arvid Battenborough. Drunk, again. Drunk. A baby train. Baby train. Alright, that's pretty good. Um, uh, I should rewatch this actually and just kind of appraise it. So this is all footage I took on the train itself, just added an old timey filter to. Uh, and obviously all the voiceover was done after the fact. Because if you think I'm walking down Euston, the Euston Concourse, going, then you got another thing coming. As yet, no researcher has caught a glimpse, although if you listen, you can hear them crying in the distance. Do you remember that photo of the, the two rats fighting on the, I think it was the subway in New York? Oh no, it was London Underground. And everyone's like, wow, what an amazing photo. I ne it just kind of never struck me as that amazing. It's a good photo, but is it? it's not like fantastic. So that's a quick visit to the <laughs> Wasn't actually sick there, that's just good acting. Did you know they have transport police? <laughs> Would Arvid Battenbury be wearing Converse? So yeah, this is just like, what's the laziest way I can bang out a sketch? You see, I've done that vignette round there. I thought that the vignette was... You're disturbing the passenger doing anything. You have to leave the train. I'm just sat here having my lunch. I don't care. I don't care who you are. You've got to get off the train. This one, that's a bad train. That one's a bad train. It's not looking at me. I just want to come back up. I don't know why that's what I think. Tragic. I don't know why that's what I think a drunk David Attenborough would be like. The 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 less said about this one, the better. The entire joke is, oh no, two groups of friends are colliding. That's my street. That's my street. Um, two groups of friends are colliding. Oh my god, how do I keep all my lies straight? Um, and I thought, oh, it's quite lo-fi. Why do I keep saying lo-fi? It's quite low-tech. This will. This has the potential to be the next um, the next wedding sketch. This has the potential to be as well-received as the wedding sketch was, because people really like that one. Um, just because it is like relatively straightforward, and it's kind of that social horror aspect to it. Uh, and it just it didn't work. It didn't work. I think it would have worked if I'd had a little bit more time to do it, but I didn't. Oh, you can you can see there. I, I got the names wrong. So because I recorded it so quickly, I, I called two of the characters John by mistake. Uh, so I had to record Tim over the top of it. So it's like Tim, Dan, and John. Trying to dissemble there, trying to trying to change tack and completely change the um. Completely, completely derail the conversation just because you never want those lies to be found out. Yeah, it doesn't work. I'm dis the whole episode's bad, to be honest. And I'm glad that we sort of waited in the, uh, one more episode because I was going to try and get back and do the next episode in one day, and it was just never going to work. Oh, this is me. A this is me. A a a t a t look, I literally spell out Brian Regent, writer, different friendship groups, lie sketch. Just like at the, at the very end, going like, this doesn't work, this doesn't work at all. How can how the fuck can I do this? Oh, let's just do a callback. A couple of great guys, they're going to be big. It's Hall of Notes. Uh, a really fun one to learn and perform, this one. But you can see that's my Hall of Notes, that's my Oats moustache there, which keeps falling off. I got some. Uh, I got some um, glue and just kept trying to put it on my face, and about halfway through. I just got rid of it. 
But thank God I did. Thank God it kept falling off because that's literally the only visually interesting thing about this. Apart from the fact that it's just slightly smaller. Just not a good episode. So this is the true crime episode. Uh, me and my girlfriend love true crime. We love it. Um, and so this is this is me effectively trying to recreate as many tropes as appear in things like the jinx, the staircase, uh, making a murderer as possible without it feeling too derivative of things like making Dennis Reynolds a murderer and um, The Eye Doesn't Lie, the uh, documentary now parody of um, Thin Blue Line, uh, which is... Thin Blue Line is an amazing true crime documentary, which you should definitely watch. And the documentary now parody of it is pitch perfect. It's so good. So this is footage... Uh, this is a picture of an alley which I'm gradually panning up, and it's a couple of strobes which I've superimposed over it using screen blending. Uh, this is my friend Shazi uh, as the dispatcher. I didn't tell him what he was doing this for. I didn't. I didn't give him any direction other than just like just answer the phone as though you're talking to a mate. I think it works out quite well. He was gonna. I think I originally wanted it to happen again at the end, or it was gonna be the same joke, but for every single time we had to call the police to the studio. So, uh, unsplash picture of a TV studio and I've just kind of superimposed the images of uh, my of Corona quiz over some of the things in the back you can you can tell actually here I'm wearing a lapel mic there it's not it's not actually mic'd up to anything but it's just kind of like for the for the visual appeal for the very similitude of it There you go. That's a, that was that was me misspeaking. One tune to the song of another that I actually really like as the name for that round, which never really had a name. Uh, so yeah, kind of this this was a complete everything. This show has just comes from a proper lack of time. Uh, so how do we do a prize? the week after Tiffany's done, but to have that footage. Well, it's clearly a different sister. What would be funny? Oh, she died again. Uh, and then the following week, well, let's just do that again. And then what with little Chris there, it became, and people texted me just like, who did it? And it became like a, it became a bit of a murder mystery uh, without me even really planning to do it. Uh, so that big cock bit gets a call at the end, a call back at the end. Uh, people people liked how this was presented. I think there's something about people sat slightly slightly off to the camera that that people just use in every single one of the um, every true crime documentary. And you do get personalities like this guy who are so self-aggrandizing and they are so they're they're, they're so delighted to be on camera, even though it's kind of like it's about a murder that you, that you kind of go ah, they did it. They, they weren't in the country. Yeah, but they did it there. They had to. I don't like them. Therefore, they did it. This, where I say weirder, that was... That was just me going, this line's boring. This, this line's boring, I'll just say something stupid and I regret it. This was gonna. This was originally much longer, and I had footage of uh, the queen climbing the rope, and then it was just. It was taking too long. It felt too similar to the uh, tribute Corona Quiz tribute episode. I was also wearing the lapel mic during the um, uh, Brian Bigcock bit, but you can't see because it's a black T-shirt. Really didn't think that one through. So every time there's that kind of uh, fade that cross dissolve between one piece of footage and the other that's deliberate because a lot of the time true crime documentaries do have that kind of fade between people talking you don't want to have that hard cut when it's if you're just cutting between sections of the same interview but mo for the most part I think I did try to do hard cuts between this or fades to black um, like I watched enough true crime documentaries to kind of know what the tropes are what they actually look like most of the time Ganges was Ganges was just chosen at random. The joke there is that she's not gorgeous, it's me. It's me in a wig. Margot Robbie and Haley Atwell had had 
Margot Robbie and Hilly Atwell had a baby, and that baby had another baby. It's a hot baby. Um, I don't know why that. I don't know why I thought that was fine or funny. <laughs> We know not who. Somebody we know not who is people on camera, uh, just drastically exaggerating how they speak um, to to try and appear, you know, worldly. Somebody we know not. We know not who. Yeah, from from whence they came. We're getting we're getting Sandra Ganji Zandies in. Uh, she was much older. Yeah, that was, was again. That was just like beautiful. done in. And I think that at no point was that was planned. Third, um, yeah, that was just something I I did. Really made us go. No, tell you what, tell like that was planned because I cut out a line is, immediately after that is, where I said, "Being old, she would have died anyway," because I I recorded it and then I was editing it and I remembered that that's straight out of Brass Eye. Yo yo, what's going? No, it's straight out day to day. The Bomb Dogs episode. That's not good either. Okay, I'll fix this. But <laughs> anyway, moving on. So. The uh, this so James Sharp obviously this Sharp he's from Yorkshire so of course he's Sharp uh, the opposite of Sharp is Blunt James Blunt um, and he's an objectionable twat so that's where that name comes from he's eating ice cream because I wanted ice cream and I thought how do you how do you show somebody's objectionable have them eat on camera Panda Wagon was I could not think of anything and you can see watch you can see me smile because I forget the word it is there you go. Down and, uh, when I arrived at scene, this was this was really fun to do. This was like um, all sorts of people, all I just I wanted to have a policeman officer in there uh, because true crime documentaries always bring in like a member of the law enforcement, a retired member of law enforcement. I thought, well, let's just have one in who's so clearly incompetent. This made me laugh. I I think this is actually why I wanted to have the. I can't remember when I thought of this, but this is why I wanted to have so much of Sharp in there because he can do jokes like this. He's a biblical fundamental literalist, which did lead to contraction of useful information at other end of graph. Uh, because I switched this around, right? Watch this. There's look. There's somebody with a lightsaber. Originally, that's because this next bit comes out was originally going to come after the bit about having to watch all the Star Wars movies and it was going to be a callback but as it is it's just a completely nonsensical bit of like visual detail uh, CBBC office timeline 6000 BC God creates heaven, earth and the firmament I, in fact I think it's just earth and firmament in the bible so that we that's fine she knows that the earth was created then she knows that Christ rose 33 AD and then everything else after that is kind of unknown I think that's very funny. Useful information at other end of graph. At other end of graph. But while reviewing the footage. Uh, this bit doesn't work. I should have got rid of this bit. It made, the episode was already too long. Oh, the joke was Question you three. think. You th Bible, we think that it's going to zoom in on little Chris and be like, uh, well, look, we found out who the culprit is. Instead, he goes straight to me as the host because wouldn't that be interesting? And you do get the impression with a lot of the true crime stuff that it's. It's less about what is possible and more about what would make for an interesting show. So this that was done in one take was me going from one voice to oh and that little fade to red. Manipulative editing in a lot of true crime stuff. That's why I, that is why I didn't like uh, the first series of Serial, the Adnan Syed case, where everyone was like, "What an amazing piece of journalism from Sarah Koenig." And it's like you know it's not they they have manipulated. This is so clearly gone in with the presumption of innocence for Adnan Syed. Anyway, we're getting. He may well be innocent, but I'm saying that the way they present it is manipulative. They had no Snickers. They had no Snickers. Uh, it's fine for me as the host of a TV show to be a twat to everybody else um, because I'm a I'm a celebrity. Because I'm a celebrity, I can do a Christian Bale. I can shout at everybody. I can have ridiculous riders. Like I think it was Popich had the other week. It was Salma Hayek demanded room temperature water, and they only had like refrigerated water and so they took one of these bottles to her and said uh, well you just gotta wait for it to warm up and she went no 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 it's not the same bring me room temperature water I don't want cold water that has naturally risen to room temperature I need room temperature I need water that has presumably always been at room temperature Obi -Wan Kenobi, Obi -Wan Kenobi which, which set us off anyway, Com like just what Obi -Wan Kenobi looks it's like the character that took me over I just thought because that wasn't in the that wasn't a lot. Of this is just me reading off the screen. Um, 
Uh, Just gonna use a police time. That's the joke. The grip actually meant Obi Wan Kenobi from prequel trilogy. So you and McGregor. I'm crap at accents. You can hear every other word. I'm I'm breaking Yorkshire accent and Phantom Menace is a very hard one to do. Phantom Menace. Yo. Um. So name. But you get it. Then for completion's sake. For completion's sake, obviously you'd have to then watch. Uh, a new hope. No, we watched. That's not a joke about uh, Force Awakens being the same movie as A New Hope, even though it is. That was literally just me forgetting. It wasn't a it wasn't a, a veiled slam at J.J. Abrams. It's a nice nice background. That. We also watch we also watch Rogue One and Solo. Like that would help. Oh, I should have said Ant, Ant Mandalorian. Watched Rogue One, Solo, and Mandalorian. Suspicion uh, fell upon. I fell in love with Gina Carano over the course of Mandalorian. Who was known to have had relationships with each Weird, like, return to colour there. Everything that was... I think that was a late change was I wanted everything that was a flashback to be in black and white. Uh, Nolly was very annoyed with me that the inconsistency in quotes between around nicknames and stuff. Look, that's Little Palm Mike. But you can just about see it. What's the term? Coming up with coming up with Dodgy different. Dodgy is a five door Ferrari. No, you'd, um, you'd buy his house, but you wouldn't look after. You'd buy his house, but not look after his gerbil. It's probably you know. He's got Collection of rare pogs. pogs. You know if you know what I mean. Driven a few too few times. Too few times M25. around the M25. As assisting chapel, you know he's a lampwick on a navy. Lampwick on a navy cruiser. He's assistant to Mr. Hanks. These were all quite fun to come up with. I like I like these kind of lists of made up euphemisms. Dylan Dylan Moran has got a really good bit about that about how he uh, grow, he thought he was growing up in a musical household because of the amount of euphemisms his parents had and they would just say things like, you know, one of, that guy over there, he's one of those. Uh, Little Chris, real name Jimmy the Dick McVitie. So that Jimmy the Dick McVitie, uh, a mixture of uh, Jimmy. Jimmy McVitie, who was a gangster, and Jack the Hat McVitie, who was a different gangster. And so I just thought, like, fuck it, just Jimmy the Dick McVitie. Look, here we go. There's that, here's that continu continuation of the other joke. Nobody in the universe spots that he's in the sink. So there he is. So a lot, there's a lot of stuff that I thought was going to be obvious that I don't think people... That just wasn't funny enough for people to go, oh, that's a joke. They didn't even think, like, oh, that's something, because I made it not funny. Detective Sharp was forced to make... A harrowing decision. After almost fifteen minutes of uh, detectorizing, he there's a bit. I think I cut out a couple more bits where he says words like detectorizing. This made me laugh as well. The idea that he, what's the, why does he think it's the zodiac? Because they both kill people. That's the only connection between the, those killings. I really like that. Could we work at zodiac killer? In there are more. So watch they get uh, pretend to look at somebody in the distance. Well, well they both kill people. And once it had been determined. So I've been for the previous week I've been like, oh, it's a sparrow, it's a sparrow episode, it's a sparrow episode, and ultimately it was. It's like how far in are we? Like quarter of an hour in at this point, no sparrow. But wait, sparrow theme, and then straight into life because again you can't do a whole episode like that. Continue with our true crime. The, I think originally this was going to be. Originally, I wanted to have um, phone banks are open. Pho the phone banks. I wanted to have previous Corona Quiz characters all manning phones, waiting for people's calls about you know like like it's a Crime Watch special. Uh, that is that is the Poirot Building. That's the official Poirot Building. Can't remember where it is, but that's the one in London. Um, an anime door, which I've written: Detective Sparrow and Bex Hill, Be Bex Hill deceased on. Uh, I think I wanted people to go, oh my god, no, Bex Hill's dead. But, yeah, they go, Ajax Sparrow, detective and bassist, because obviously he was a bassist in the um, in the Corona Quiz tribute episode. Little Ankhogs, there we go. Didn't have the lapel this pin this time, couldn't find it. Um, so, yeah, this is obviously a reference to uh, Randall and Hopkins, deceased. That, which that, that TV show about uh, two private eyes, one of them who's killed and comes back as a ghost. I thought, wouldn't that be funny 
if in fact originally I wanted this to be like a, a clash of a bunch of different detective stuff. So we got true crime, we got uh, Christy, we got uh, 60s gimmick detective stuff, and then we've got Moonflower, and Moonflower comes in as like the Scooby Doo. Uh, here we learn Andrew Bexhill, who is, in the same way that uh, Hastings is purely known, he's like a failed businessman, and uh, but ultimately his best, his, the, his primary characteristic is his Poirot's mate. There you go, breaking the fourth wall. Ghosts, uh, we know that ghosts exist in the Coronacus universe because of um, uh, Chad Threadrington, so why would that slow anybody down? He was going to get his V card stamped. His ghost companion. And then you can uh, periodically, I'll just like completely drop the the voice and just to be like, I, no, seriously, I'd watch that. I would, I would watch that. I would watch a Christie detective and his ghost friend. Corona quiz. The, as of this recording, the trailer for um, the Kenneth Branagh the Death on the Nile uh, Poirot movie has just come out, and oh my god, I think my accent's better than Kenneth Branagh's. He's, he's so bad, it's so bad, and there's people, they just continually cast terrible people in it. I think that What's the Face from Sex Education is going to be good in it. Why is Russell Brand in it? I bet the people who made the trailer are so angry that it that it came out like two days after Russell Brand went. Uh, let me give you my long-winded uh, synonym fill take on on WAP on on why WAP is a uh, uh, isn't a trial for feminism, but is in fact porn. Let me tell. Let me as a man tell you that. Pipe. I think I was originally gonna superimpose a pipe in there and then just thought fuck it I'll just write pipe that guy from uh, X-Files I know the game I know the game I know the name that's uh, Eugene Victor Toomes from um, the episode Stretch and the episode Toomes uh, really really good episodes of, of X-Files and I just wanted to just wanted to bring that in Did, though it was going to be this 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 my mate Heidi and we think the killer. And there's Cat and Charlie. Important that they. Oh, here's why having a ghost pal is useful. You can see I go well because I had to loop that piece, that bit of footage, because I didn't leave enough time to react to Ghost Bexhill originally. I think I have an idea. See there, you can see I was just like, oh, fuck, how do, I, how do I transition into this next bit? Of my own. So originally I was going to go out and buy a box of Ritz crackers, which were going to be Moonflower, like the Scooby Snacks treat. Bonjour, Monsieur Moonflower. Yeah, what's up? Heavier beard this time, so it's not quite as good an effect on Moonflower. Particular talent. So... What uh, what I do like about this is it's the it's the clash of of, of Moonflower's ultimate like practicality. I'll do it for money. I'll do it for money. I just I need money. I need money to pay the bills. Hit that hard headedness going up against. I'll do it for money. There you go. Going up against like Sparrow's uh, enthusiasm and the audience's expectation that cartoon characters will do stuff for Scooby Snacks. Hundred. No, no. 75 francs. Francs? Why? I don't know. Oh, He's not even French. 75. He's Belgian. <laughs> Why? Well, not that that matters. <laughs> Texas gun. Texas gun. You can see what I mean about running out of time. Originally, I was probably going to have a gun there. So there's Jimmy the Dick McVitie, little Chris. Originally going to superimpose something there. Run out of time. So here he is trying to lift a pint. Not sure if that even comes across. That jump is too small. Here he comes. Mr. Chris, you've uh, you've got to come with me. No, don't. No, uh, no, fight no, music. I don't want any trouble. Listen, I'm a wage slave like you. Let's just. Let's go. Hey, ow, Quite no, a high concept no, 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 episode. Watch this. There's a there's a headbutt here which actually works really well, almost by complete coincidence. That's it. That's it. Look at this. Look how much I ran out of time with this. This the mouth not even moving with the face. 
Don't do that. Listen, listen. I'm armed. I'm up. Listen, this is a final warning. There you go. He's cooling down. He's cooling down. This is a final warning. I'm Got to pull that jumper do down because it's too small. I'll do it. He's going to do it. Watch out, little Chris. Listen, if you won't stop. All right, fine. Well, that, look, there. You were, I, you were resisting citizens' arrest. I, guess. I have gunshot sound effects. Why did I just go... Ah, uh, Moonflower. Things getting from going from bad to worse for Monsieur Moonflower. Something to note. And ultimately to the denouement. Nous arrivons. Nous arrivons. Me trying to figure out what the. And now nous arrivons à le denouement. I'm sure each of you out there in the real world. There you go. A little bit of breaking the fourth wall again. Oh, I've got something in my teeth there. Can you wrap this mystery up in a bow for us? I didn't notice that. That's really annoying. No. No. Fun fact, the script originally called for me to say yes. So for this to be for this to make sense, right? We have to ignore the fact that I mean she originally there was a bit scripted for how uh, Sandra stabbed herself. How Candy got into the hot top, hot hot tub uh, and who turned the engine on. Plus who ran out leaving the bloody footprints behind. But it's just kind of go, fuck it, nobody cares. The joke is that, he, that it was trial by media. It was trial by live media. Everybody at home was to blame. This is what happens when you try to ad-lib anything. It's just crap. Shut. Shut. I haven't done the graphics for that bit yet. Hadn't. Hadn't done the graphics. That was the only Which made it which made that bit like he shot him in the heart maybe I don't know I haven't done the graphics yet Bake him away toys so originally there was going to be two more moon flares come in just wearing police caps ran out of time uh, it's tricky um, I mean, uh, true crime documentaries always have that wrap up at the end where it's just like it's all just trite observations and it's just nonsense the best one is still don't fuck with cats where they get two of the internet sleuths to go together to this diner and one of them's like, well, we all did it together. And the guy goes, no, it's me. We'll get started. That's me. And then they both make quite try observations about like, well, just think, it's it's this case brought us together. Isn't that great? And he's like, nah, it's me. They solved it. solved it. Video, because the question is going to follow. And to be honest, quite a disappointing little uh, end. Um, again, ran out of time to do a bunch of stuff before this week's episode. So the skit is... This it's the it's the slam it's the slam of of it's the slam of um uh, brands like obviously this is McDonald's I tried to make NBC look like a face didn't work of um of of brands who were just like right at the start they were like well we're all in together with you hey we may be a multinational but we have the same as you we're we're, we're people as well and you go like nah 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 smaller shops. Have genuinely been there for consumers. Burger King just wants people going through the door again, and annoying to me that they. I think I saw a Reddit post actually that was like, uh, April brands, we're all in it together. June brands, you may as well get it in our store in our stores, um, and it's just kind of that. It's that insincerity of it. We know that they're just trying to sell us stuff. You don't need to say this. Brands aren't people too. I mean, ultimately, that is what they're saying. They're basically saying, like, it's worth... The risk is worth it for you to come down and potentially catch it and pass it on to your loved ones and kill them so that we can have a good age too. Let's read those season C's. Uh, one funeral per participating country. NBC will not pay out in the extremely likely event we are the direct cause of death. Do you plebs honestly think we'll honour this anyway? I hope you're ready for a length... Lengthy legal battle. I'll give up a single dime over my cold dead body. Ultimately, we'll be in the ground with you. We'll all be in the ground together one day. We'll all be in the ground together one day. Why don't you just get there a little bit earlier, so that I can live in my penthouse for a little bit longer? And finally, the very last, the very very last. Uh, skit that we ever did for the we I keep saying we that I ever did for Corona quiz uh, was this was um, me just using Bloodborne again uh, look at that spot but listen 
But listen, hey guys, so this is pre-recorded, so at this point, my, I had appeared on camera live for the last time. Here we go, fade into a JPEG of uh, the final boss arena from Bloodborne. Uh, tint it red to match the footage, which I captured from the game, of the moon presence. Just, uh, I wanted a nice little non sequitur, a little bit of weirdness just to end the series. Uh, and then just add a little bit of uh, turbulent displacement, scream, and then credits. Will, will there be more? Probably. I'll do a special or whatever. Or, I don't know, maybe, maybe ITV really will license it.